So, hello, um, welcome. Um, I'm just uh, going to introduce um, somebody who founded uh, the iconic Curve magazine in 1991. Uh, Franco, hello. Hey, thanks for having me. Really honored. So, uh, it's, um, I think Diva was started in 1994, so we're definitely following your footsteps. Um, it was great to see the story. Uh, uh, being a magazine publisher myself, many people don't really realise the the background and, and the work that goes into it, but you certainly put a lot of work into establishing Curve. Thank you. Yeah, it was, as you know, a labour of love. Yeah, no, it, it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, how did it see, seeing, how did it feel seeing yourself on screen, uh, you know, all these years later? Well, for one, I thought, man, I look old. <laughs> <laughs> it's there's nothing like looking at yourself on a on in a film and just you know it's just such an odd experience for me i'm more of a behind the scenes kind of person and um you know i just try to let myself be as vulnerable as possible um so that both jen and rivka could get the story that they wanted and, and whose idea was it to make this documentary Oh, it was definitely Jen Raynan's idea to make the film. Um, I think, you know, we're married and over the course of our marriage, uh, definitely at the beginning, I would just tell her some of the crazy stories about De Novo and Curve, uh, you know, how we came to be and some of the crazy things I had to do to get the money and keep the publication afloat. And um, there was always one story that my sons, that our sons asked me at bedtime to tell. And that's the story of how I cashed in a handful of credit cards and took all the money to the racetrack and bet on the horses and got enough money to print three editions of the magazine. I, that, that was definitely one of my favorite renditions of, of the documentary. It was pretty amazing. But for, without giving sp uh, spoilers away, but for uh, horses whose curve might not have happened, right? That is true. That is exactly true. Some, I don't know, somehow I suspect it would have happened. I don't know why, I have a feeling. Yeah, it. I don't know what way it would have happened, but it seems like everything fell into place the way that it should have. It's like, you know, if we needed an editor, then we got the perfect editor. If we needed, you know, a photographer, a great photographer just showed up. It, it seemed like it was the right time in the right place. And you know what it was like in the 90s for lesbians in a city? I mean, what year did you leave San Francisco? Uh, I think roughly about 1991. Uh, yeah. When I came back a, a, a few times, uh, definitely uh, I got the feel of, uh, of being there all over again through the documentary. Oh, good. That's what I, that's what, well, that's what they wanted to, you know, to show is that that if you can capture that energy of um, San Francisco for lesbians in the 90s and what it was like to start a lesbian magazine then, I think that's what they were really going for. Um, and uh, I, I, I love the way it came out. I didn't have anything to do with filming or editing or what questions they could ask or what questions they couldn't ask. Um, I trusted them enough to say, okay, you know, whatever you want to ask me, just like I did with you, nothing is off the record. Whatever you want to ask me, I'm fine to answer. I might cry during it, but I'm fine to answer it. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to make you cry, Frank. I don't think anybody uh, me. Uh, you, you're the hero at the moment, for sure. Uh, we started the do you started the documentary. Actually, I'm going to ask you, first of all, because yeah. what I am hoping is we come up with a positive uh, response, but um, I know uh, we are just in the UK coming out of lockdown. Do you think there's going to be a showing and are you going to come to the UK to show this documentary? Oh my gosh, I would love to come. Um, maybe not in June this year, but as soon as it's safe, I would love to have a showing. I mean, I was so sad not to be able to go on the festival circuit, you know, last year. I felt like gosh, you know, what would this be like in a theater with, you know, 200, 300, 500 people? Amazing. Yeah, no, I don't, I, yeah. I was going to say, absolutely, I, I, I hope you do come. I, re I really do. And it's going to be, there'll be a big turnout for sure, Franco. Oh, 
with your help, I'm sure there will be. No, definitely, definitely. It was really great. It was, uh, you know, to watch the documentary and uh, anyone that goes to San Francisco now and has just seen that documentary, they'll just be like, well, what happened, you know? I don't know if you have that feeling or? Yeah, I definitely think, well, like the whole United States, there's only a handful of lesbian bars. I mean, the only way they wouldn't have think they wouldn't think what happened, you know, where is this lesbian presence is if you went to what we call Pink Saturday and the Dyke March, where um, the big park uh, in the Castro, you know, probably 50,000 turnout for the Dyke March. And uh, it's pretty incredible, you know, but other than that, it's kind of a little disjointed. I don't know if you're seeing that there. We, you know, we've lost most of our bars. Um, and be, that was even before COVID. Uh, we have one lesbian owned bar left. Uh, uh, where's that? Um, that is Jolene's and it's owned by um, a lesbian and a transgender man. And then actually we have the Wild Side West, which is more of a neighborhood bar. Um, although it's, definitely a place uh, lesbians go and hang out yeah we do have the same issue in the uk all the lesbian bars uh, are dying out but that's that's something uh, we'll go into um you uh, from the start of the documentary it kind of really does follow the journey of, of what you're doing now uh it starts with you actually questioning what can i do uh with curve um do you want to tell us a little bit uh, about that because i don't want to give away too many spoilers but Sure. Well, the interesting thing about that is um, what you saw as the beginning of the film was filmed three quarters of the way through filming the documentary. So we were on this sort of, a, uh, it was more of a biopic about, you know, Curve around the time that it found it and how it got started. And when we were almost done filming uh, the movie, I got that call saying the magazine might not be around that much longer and it threw me into um you know it threw me into this journey of how do i find out if curve is still needed um if it is in what format um you know do the women in our community still embrace the term lesbian um is that antiquated just so many different questions so i went around um I guess, North America meeting with some activists, younger activists, because now I'm a little bit older. And, uh, you know, what are they doing to make a difference? And, you know, what has changed about our culture today? And what do we need? You came up with the idea to make that into a foundation, to turn that into a foundation. I mean, how did you get that idea? You know, what, what made you think of it? So the idea to start the foundation or something else originated with her. And then um, there was a advisory council and we toyed around with a bunch of ideas at a in-person meeting and over Zoom and stuff long before COVID hit. And then, uh, you know, I guess she just got to a point where, what's going on here? Oh, sorry, there's a lizard and my service dog is like, what's that? We're visiting my mom for the first time in two years. So um, can you leave that bud? That's a gecko. Um, yeah, so just kind of, uh, you know, finding out what the community needed um, or what it still needs. I mean, I don't, I don't know about you, but print is so hard. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it is a struggle. And this is what I say to everybody uh, every day, you know, it's a struggle, but I'm like so determined uh, to keep it in print only because I feel, um, and this is, I'm talking from a UK perspective, it's like the love that people have for Diva. I almost feel I'm, I'll, I'll be letting people yes. down. Yes. You know? I feel the same way. I really do. And um you know, there's something really tangible about a magazine that you can hold in your hand. Um, 
So it's weird here in Florida, there's, there's these big lizards that just come up and see what you're eating. Can you leave that, please? Where, where uh, are you? I know Florida very well. Oh, Those yeah, I'm in, I'm in Gainesville by the University of Florida. Okay, okay. You know where that is? That's kind of in the middle of nowhere, Central Florida? Yeah, I do know it's in the middle of nowhere. I usually go to Boca quite a lot on Miami. Oh, so. yeah. yeah, yeah, very different. They have the beaches there. Here is just the swamp. Yeah, no. Uh, so I know I know exactly what you're talking about with those uh, lizards or so of course you know what I think you know what I think you and I should do um, a televised live or recorded zoom session about the state of lesbian magazines in print because I mean really wh why should we not be having this live dialogue for our readers you know like so that they can actually see how committed we are to them and you know what we've gone through to get to this point i mean everyone wants a lesbian bar but they don't always want to go to it everyone wants curve magazine but it doesn't mean they're going to go to the newsstand or buy it through a subscription you know if if they don't do that we can't you know we we can't survive you know it's actually we had our Curve Magazine had by the by the time we had our lawsuit and recovered in the early 2000s. I mean, it was it was incredible the readership we had. You know, um, I felt this real need of this was the only lifeline for women in the United States. You know, to be connected to their community, um, and now with the internet and you know facebook and all these other you know youtube and all these other ways for people to connect to each other where do we fit in you know is curve going to be in print again is it going to be a magazine again i don't know so the overwhelming response has been amazing when i put up that i don't know if you saw it that little flip chart thing just saying i bought the magazine back the response was ridiculous. It was, it was so heartwarming. Oh my gosh. Well, it, it, it felt like it was going home to its proper place. I mean, I, I, I talked earlier, um, you know, with the opportunity for Diva to join with Curve and it just didn't feel right. And I feel the, the documentary shows that the love that, that you had for it. And I, you know, people may be surprised if they were to watch this, but I would just implore you, you know, to go, you know, to try and get it in print again, because print magazines, as you said, mean so much. And I saw the documentary and I saw, uh, this is obviously, I'm sort of living a parallel life, if you like, in the UK, where exactly people are the same, do we need a magazine or whatever, but the heartwarming that I see from the people that get the magazine, that are living in isolated places and what it means to them, you know, makes me kind of want to continue. And you're absolutely right. I spend so much time saying to people, you know, they're like, well, we shouldn't lose this. And I'm saying, just buy it and subscribe, you know, and uh, it, it, it is working, but we do do uh, a lot of other stuff. I, I don't want to make this about Diva and I'm, I'm not trying to make this a problem, but what we've had to do is, is do stuff like big events, uh, you know, fundraisers and stuff like that, and awards yeah. events. So it's it's more, and I, and I can see that with Curve as well. It's more a brand, isn't it, than an actual magazine? Like some people, it's grown so much they don't actually realise that Diva is actually a magazine as well. So it's gone oh. the other way, you know. So yeah. it's, it's quite successful. I mean, you Diva like Curve is, you know, a, such a valuable resource for the community. It's like, you know, the, the second you feel like giving up and somebody tells you that, they, that your publication saved their life, you're like, I can still go on, you know? It's, it's that fuel that keeps us going, you know? We were so bootstrapped for a while when I had the magazine before, um, you know, they say some crazy ways I came up with money along the way uh, during the film, but, um, uh, you know, I would have done anything in my power to keep the magazine going. And um, and I think the movie does a great job of documenting that and showing that, you know, it wasn't all a walk in the park. 
Yeah, it does. It's just it does it does show the glamorous uh, side though, because it's almost like at one stage you become bigger than the brand, you know. And uh, I wondered that sort of led to the demise of the magazine, if you like, uh, because the love and the you, the passion that you had it it being your baby, if you like it 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 just never seemed to petition after uh, you sold it on. I don't know if you feel the same or you want to comment on that. I think when you, I think the hard part was, you know, having the publisher in another country, as you said, it's difficult. There's a, you know, not only is there a time difference, but there's a mental difference, right? So um, even, even if the magazine had gone from being simply a West Coast United States to an East Coast United States, it would have um, a, a different feel, right? So I don't think that I became bigger than the magazine. Um, I think that print just became a real challenge. I don't know, so, I've been out of it for 10 years. I might be, you know, I might be analyzing it incorrectly. So even even as I talk to you, Franco, it feels like you've not like uh, given up the, 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 the print idea then because um, Seems like you're tempted back in, which I'm pleased about. <laughs> I am a little bit tempted. Um, we, with the Curve Foundation, uh, the idea is to give back to the community because the community has, you know, done so much and come so far. But really, the the idea is, is that the best way to serve them? And we have our first executive director in in uh, Jasmine Sudarkasa. And uh, man, she's a powerhouse. She's been on for about a week. So we're just getting our fingers wet. And uh, oh, that's a bad pun. Do not, do not say we're getting our fingers wet. I don't know. It's too, it's, that's it's like too, a lesbian pun. OK. It's too good not to use, to be fair. That sounds like a headline. No, please, no. We're just starting to dip our toes into the pond. Uh, and we're going to see what happens. But um, our first two projects are, you know, there's no um, complete archive of 30 years of Curve magazine. You cannot, like the other day I was looking, oh, what, what uh, issue was Rachel Maddow, uh, who's a political pundit here in the United States, what, what issue was she in when she was a 21-year-old baby dyke just graduating from school? And I couldn't find it at all. I couldn't go on uh, Google and find it. Um, I couldn't even go inside the Curve Archives and find it. So the first project is to get all those magazines up and archived and um, free for people to go and read at their pleasure or search when they search for Curve. If it, you can't find it on Google, it's like it never even existed. You know, it's it's crazy. Um, and. Uh, one of the one of the tracks led me. The reason I'm at Starbucks is because my mom lives so in the middle of nowhere that this is the only place I can get a signal if I want to come and have a, a meeting that won't drop off. So um, sorry about the ambient noise. But um, uh, what was I just talking about before I lost my train of thought to the ambient noise? Are you talking about the the curve uh, archive? But oh I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just wondering because uh, what I found in in our situation is that people have actually actually contacted us, and you'll probably find this as well, and said that they have the whole uh, collection from the first issue. You know, have you come across yeah. that at all? Yeah, we put out a call to women saying, "Hey, we're missing, you know, twelve issues. Um, can you help us out?" And we almost have all of them now. So what had happened was when I sold the magazine um, in 2010 or 2011, I was in extremely bad health. Um, I was bed bound because of my disability. I was in excruciating pain. I was getting spinal blocks once a week. And I um, you know, had a storage unit with a lot of the archival stuff and I just couldn't, um, you know, I, wa I wasn't in the state of mind where I could have had an archivalist go in and extract all the relevant stuff that they thought would be, you know, great to keep. So, you know, that stuff just kind of is gone. 
Well, because, yeah, for many people, uh, you know, as obviously when you started, Curve, as you just mentioned, there was there was no internet and there was no online issues and uh, etc. So uh, even your stories about uh, how you publicised and got the message out, they're just such a, it's just a, amazing uh, for people to see all of this and uh, the journey you went on was quite incredible. I, I Max, did you, did you ever do that? Did you ever drive across the country just like, introducing the magazine to women uh, uh i did i did actually go to there's a lot of parallels we, we'll have to talk offline one time but with the stories of you uh you know going to all the prides and setting up and trying to get subscriptions i i did that and to be fair i still do that you know at the prize you know because you just uh you just want so many people subscribe and it was lovely to see that energy and this is the energy that it it takes to to get it going you know i and uh uh, pictures people don't realize and I, I that's what I loved about the documentary the showing of how difficult it was to get it there because at the end of the day people see the end product they just see the magazine they don't know what yeah. a struggle I mean I was aware of the Dino Dino struggle I mean I used to uh, when I lived in San Francisco when our backs was going I lived in Lulu's house Lulu Bellevue <laughs> so, uh, you know it brings back lots of memories I went to the page parties you know so it was a uh, you know, fantastic memories and great to have. That was one of the questions I was going to ask you. I mean, yeah. where do all these archives come from? Because they're pretty amazing. The film well, footage. Yeah, a lot of them came from this little handheld um, camera that we used to take on tour and go to some parties with. And then all the childhood stuff came from my brother-in-law, who is, you know, that guy in the family that always has the camera out no matter what you're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, I just let Jen have like, here's all of my life stuff, like go for it. She talked to my ex-girlfriends. She, uh, few of them are in the film. <laughs> so that very lesbian that was. Yes, very, very. <laughs> but I, I saw Rachel Pepper as well. I think if, if I remember rightly, it was great to see Rachel. She was, uh, she was the book editor at the time, was yep. she? That yep. right. She was the book <laughs> editor. She did reviews. She did you know, some feature pieces. She worked as our distribution manager in the office for a couple of years. And she's, she's gone on to become a professor, hasn't she? Yes. <laughs> and a psychologist. Some, she has a MFA or no, no, not master's in fine arts, master's in psychology. Psych she might be a doctor now. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't want to get this wrong, so I'm not going to say, because if she sees this interview, she won't forgive me. But it was great to see that, and it was just great to see all the energy. Um, so the plans going forward, uh, are you planning on, um, on, on opening a, a place particularly, or, or are you going to do pop-ups of, of, of all your archives? What are the plans for the foundations? Yeah, so the um, June Mazer Lesbian Archives in Los Angeles is right on the cusp of releasing both a um, digital exhibition and a li in live in-person exhibition. Um, I've got to look at it. I honestly don't know where other people have, other people have sent in materials. So it's not just things that came from my archive. It's really incredible and I can't wait um, for it to be out there. That was part of our initial, um, you know, archival project. Okay, and I don't know if you've seen what we've done at Diva. I mean, um, we, we're using the brand. Uh, did you see what we did with Curve a couple of years ago where we all joined together with Auto Strata? It was an amazing moment. Um, we all joined together as magazines, as lesbian magazines, LGBTQI women magazines to make a statement. Yes. <laughs> predominantly against after I mean what, what do you think I mean I love that moment of us all coming together in, as it like a almost a superpower uh, across the many continents etc I mean is that something that you will be doing is, is working with other organizations or you know um, because I felt that was so powerful the message it was like we are rivals we are competitors but we stand together against oppression you know yeah, totally. I really want to do that. And I don't see us as competitors at all. So if Curve Magazine was published today, where would it go if there was a newsstand to put it on? 
You know, we don't want our publications to be standing alone with not next to anyone in our own segment. Um, is there is there a lesbian segment in a newsstand anymore? It's kind of like we've gone back to the days where, you know, there were there were no space for us in the newsstand because there well there's new newsstands really. I don't know if you all, you all have newsstands there. I saw newsstands in New York, but like in San Francisco, I mean, I I don't see any newsstands, but so what, what I'm trying to get at is I don't see Curve and Danube as rivals at all. Um, and if we don't unite, we're not using our collective power. Yeah. It's to me, it seems like, why wouldn't we do that? You know, I mean, if we ever got enough money where we could fund all the projects we wanted to fund, why wouldn't we fund an in-depth interview that a writer does for diva it's it's the mission of the foundation to tell our stories yeah no that sounds that sounds fantastic did you uh, did you also see what we've done with uh lesbian visibility week There's yes a, yes it'd be great yes. to have you involved in that next year as well i would love to we dipped our feet into that this year um most people in the u.s they don't really know about it we did the week but we mostly did the day and we had um uh we did a live um interview um a couple live interviews about that and so starting to plant those seeds of you know lesbian lesbian visibility week um but yeah i really want to jump on board for that yeah no that'd be fantastic because i did notice uh the foundation uh, liking some posts and i was like yeah uh curva, curva liking it that was great and yeah yeah what what we're about is basically um in the uk is using the brand to basically do things and and, and really lift the uh, the visibility of lesbians and i love that you touched on this in the documentary uh where somebody mentioned uh, that it was just a small minority of lesbians who were becoming known as transphobic um, and unfortunately they're a small uh loud minority if you like and i really mm -hmm. like that you touched on that in the documentary because I'm really about reclaiming uh, lesbians as, as a word that people should say with pride and people not assume you're transphobic, maybe. And that I am. Across, I'm with you. That, that came across in, so well in the documentary as well. Okay. So, uh, um, and pe the documentary now, people can download it, I saw, on, on Apple, yeah? Is it getting paid? Yes. Else? Well, here's the thing. Um, today, the pre-sales on Apple um, is the last day. So it's really dependent on um, how we, how well that pre-sale links does. So how far we move up the, the ladder on, on Apple. Um, it's playing um, in the UK at some, I have a link that I can send you to where it all is being sent. I mean, uh, hold on one second. So, somebody mentioned they just done an interview with you as well. Uh, James, James Moore just uh, contacted me. So you're doing is is the is it for sale for a longer time in the UK at the moment? Yeah, think. yeah. I think the best thing to do would be to ask uh, Natasha when she comes back. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, yeah. So so the pre-sales today it opens. Um, I think on the fourth in the UK, um, and uh, yeah, the Apple thing. It'll be on um, Stars in the US. I don't know if you have Stars there. Yeah, we we do we do, but yeah. we'll, we'll go into that. I mean, yeah. the question I really want to ask you is, um, if you had, um, could you have ever thought in 1991? like uh 30 years ago that there'd be a big documentary and you were you were like making history i never would have thought it for a second in fact if you look at the very first issue of the magazine the year isn't even on the, the on the cover i didn't even imagine there'd be a second year <laughs> i mean this really has turned into my life's work my life's mission you know whether i knew knew it back then or not um you know i i started the magazine when i was 23, 22 when I got the first, I, when I first said, yeah, I'm going to do this. And it's 30 years later. I mean, that's insane. I mean, I thought, oh my gosh, 
you know, when I turn 40, I'm going to be so old. What year would that be? And now I'm like, oh, 40. <laughs> Did, and then in 2010, you, you sold it. Did you ever think that you would go back to it? Did you miss it a lot when you sold it? Or did you just... I, re I really missed it a lot. Um, and, you know, I used this analogy before it, but it was really like my child had grown up and gone off to have its own life. You know, no one expects their adult child to move back into the house. <laughs> but, but... Hey, after I'm I'm so excited to see what Jasmine and her crew, you know, do. Um, you know, now it's a nonprofit. You know, the Cur Curve Magazine is a project of the Curve Foundation. Any money that's donated to it is a tax write-off. Um, it was basically a not-for-profit for a really long time. It's not like we were lining our pockets with money from Curve Magazine. Um, you know, we were there. To support the community that's that was it above all else you know what you sacrificed you know when it then you know the the night before you go to press you probably be, i don't know you still pull all-nighters yeah it's not like that anymore you know it's almost like you just find the printers and say can you give me an extra 12 hours but i did used to uh, i did used to pull all-nighters you know but it has you know digital has really changed everything but yeah uh, we used to really, but I think it was because more uh, we were crammers, because um, I owned another magazine called G3 before Diva, uh, and then I went on. So I've been a publisher for quite a few years. But yeah. uh, what I was going to um, just ask there was um, just a sec. Da, 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 da. Um, my mind is gone. It's just uh, my mind is absolutely gone because this interview is, is blowing my head away. It's like uh, yeah, this is not. This is the conversation we would have. We should have had when, you know, we're online and the whole world is listening to. Because I th think it's more of a conversation just between us than, you know, an interview about the movie, right? Well, yeah, but it's you know it, it's resonating with me a lot because uh, you were talking there. The one thing I always. Uh, say about diva just for example and i can see the same with curve it's it's almost like you are now a not not for profit we're yeah. a profit ma making uh, company but obviously you know uh, how it is let's oh, sure. uh, but the community i feel that the community feel that that it's their magazine like sometimes i just have to say hang on a minute you know but it's the community almost take ownership of it and it's a very bizarre thing because in a way it's your business but you're responsible yeah. for the whole community yeah yeah no i i agree i you know i haven't been you know in charge of curve magazine for 10 years um so it's interesting you know, at the response that people had when they're seeing the movie and how much it touched them and how it brought them back to this place in time where it was crucial for them. And maybe they thought they were all alone, but they weren't. And they knew it because they had Curve Magazine. I just want to say that uh, that it is going to be released in the UK on the 4th of June. There you go. Thank you. I really hope people go out and watch the film because if you don't watch the film, you're not supporting lesbian film and telling lesbian stories. So thank you for watching the film. <laughs>